ASEAN. Hello, I'm Ati Ranuta Judin, your host for Navigate ASEAN, a series of interviews with some of the region's leading public figures, brought to you by the ASEAN Post. In today's episode, we speak to Septia Buntara, Manager of Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency at ASEAN Centre for Energy. Today, we speak to Saptia about how renewable energy or clean energy can help the region to tackle issues such as the climate crisis. Welcome, Saptia. Um, as we all know, governments around Southeast Asia and even the world are building more solar parks, hydroelectric uh, power plants, and wind farms to generate power. Um, in your opinion, Septia, um, which ASEAN member state is leading the renewable um, energy race and how have they achieved this? Um, in ASEAN, actually, we uh, have similar understanding uh, on the importance of renewable energy development. However, if you look at the statistic, um, actually, Vietnam has risen to the top in terms of the modern renewable energy share in ASEAN. Of course, we notice uh, the recent developments of the solar and wind uh, in the country. What is happening there? Um, I think because the government could set a generous solar FIT, for example, and also they combine it together with tax reductions for project developers. I think that that kind of regulation provide a, a rush kind of motivation yeah, for a new solar capacity and also new a wind capacity development for the country. In addition, uh, from uh, the political point of view, I think they could attract investor to the country to be able to provide more support for the investment for wind and solar. I think this kind of factors really matters to improve and enhance renewable energy um, development in the country. So when we look at renewable energy in ASEAN, the focus is usually on hydropower and solar, but nuclear has largely been ignored, uh, mainly due to uh, the Fukushima and Chernobyl disasters. Satya, what are the genuine prospects for nuclear in the region and um, is ASEAN ready for nuclear power? We recognized the challenge uh, because of the accident of Fukushima and Chernobyl in the past. However, in ASEAN, we, we are ensuring um, the readiness of our member states when maybe one of them want to pursue about, uh, for nuclear power generation. Why? Because our aim actually on the energy security. At the moment, under the ASEAN Plan of Action for Energy Cooperation, we have a program, we call it Civilian Nuclear Energy, which mainly the focus uh, to provide our member states on the capacity building, exchange knowledge and experience with more advanced countries who already established the nuclear power plant. Um, to answer your question, um, the nuclear actually is not, uh, we not put aside the potential of nuclear power plant. We're just focusing on the capacity building right now. So in the future, if there is opportunity and there is a necessity to apply or adopt nuclear power plant in the region, the ASEAN ready. In particular, what we are doing right now, uh, we are focusing on activities or study related on nuclear safety, safeguard and security. So we hope it will be a good reference for ASEAN, at least to shorten later. Uh, the gap when we want to establish nuclear power plant in ASEAN could be in ASEAN level or maybe at the country level in the future. Okay, so we all know that uh, climate change and renewable energy are usually associated with one another. Um, but does renewable energy actually mitigate uh, climate change, Satya? Actually, the many theories about the climate change. Um, however, from our six ASEAN energy outlook, um, we identified that by fulfilling the ASEAN progressive scenario target, of course, on renewable energy, uh, the region uh, will produce less emission, about around half uh, from the baseline, from the 4,000, I guess, uh, the, the GHG emission. So in short, the relationship is not straightforward uh, as we think. 
but the basic premise is the renewable energy solution would open a pathway towards reducing emission, especially in Asia. Okay, Septia, um, how can renewable energy help in reviving economies as we build back better um, in a post-pandemic world? From the sixth ASEAN Energy Outlook, um, we identified job creation as the opportunity uh, from a renewable energy sector to support uh, us and in, in build back better in post-pandemic situation. Um, increasing investment in solar and wind can create direct and indirect jobs from our findings. From the uh, 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 policy scenario, I mean, advancing policy on renewable in ASEAN, it can increase installation of solar and wind power, and it can add about uh, more than 200,000 jobs in 2025. And the target aligned with uh, what we plan under the ASEAN Plan of Action for Energy Cooperation. And this is about um, more jobs uh, for uh, the one who affected by the fossil fuel reduction for, for the region. Well, when we uh, see from the angle from the technology scenario, uh, we um, see around 130,000 more jobs that we can apply for 2025. I think by enhancing renewable energy, I think more or less will support ASEAN uh, in creating more jobs opportunity that later can fasten the bounce back or the acceleration of the economy after the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, unfortunately, we have run out of time. Uh, thank you, Septia, for uh, joining us today. Thank you for being with us today on Navigate ASEAN. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and our other social media channels by looking for the ASEAN Post. Thank you and have a good evening. Navigate ASEAN.